Hi students, and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian, and I'm streaming to you live from rainy Budapest here on this almost spring day. I hope everybody has had a great start to their week. In this class, we are looking at speaking part one, questions, answers, practice, and of course, some strategy to get those higher band scores. Hi, Tito. Hi, Hemant. Hi, Awaz. Hi, Kiran. Hi, Jaskaran. Hello to all of our members. Uh, Michael Fan, I see that um, you said you just paid for membership. I believe that's on our websites. So you probably paid for a premium course at aehelp.com or gltshelp.com. To be a member of the YouTube channel, that membership is controlled by Google, by YouTube. Uh, you have to click the join button beside the subscribe button where it's available. That Google decides and countries decide where that's available. If you don't see that button, uh, you can send me an email, adrian at aehelp.com, and then I can send you some more information on how you might be able to uh, be a member of this YouTube channel also, okay? Uh, again, a little bit while we wait for some more members uh, and students to join up, a little bit about us. Uh, these lessons are presented to you by aehelp.com. Uh, for academic IELTS success, uh, definitely visit us there. And for the general IELTS, please visit us at gieltshelp.com. On both of these websites, uh, we have loads of materials for you to improve all aspects of your IELTS exam. And of course, as well as your English and communication skills. I'll just show you those really quickly. This is our um, academic web portal here at aehelp.com. You can click that big red button to join the premium package. And this is the general version with the green background. And again, you can click that red button to join us there. Students, you can download our apps and link them to your web accounts. Uh, search for academic IELTS help or general IELTS help in your app stores. Again, if you have questions, about the exam or our products, just send me an email, adrian at aehelp.com. Uh, this week, we have four days of classes. Today, speaking part one. Tomorrow, uh, reading for members, followed by listening parts one and two for everyone. Then on Friday, task one for members, listening parts three and four for everyone. And then on uh, Saturday, we'll have a question and answer session for members and do speaking part three for everyone. So that's looking ahead to the next week. All right, students, let's get into today's class. I know you're anxious to get going. Uh, this is a speaking class, so make sure to speak. It's great if you type into the chat, but also speak and repeat. Okay, so uh, repetition is good practice. Just repeat what you hear. So repeat what I say. I will correct your answers in real time that I see in the chat. Uh, again, my English is West Coast, North American. Uh, think about Seattle, Vancouver, Victoria, that area. Okay, it's a crisp, clear English, so by all means, it's a good pronunciation to master. All right, um, so you walk in to your speaking interview, okay? You visualize that your speaking interviewer is your um, grandma or your grandpa, so you feel confident, comfortable, you feel like you're loved, and you're going to do your best to speak clearly, loudly, because maybe grandma, grandpa, their hearing isn't all that good anymore, so you want to speak with a clear, loud voice. Uh, where should you keep your hands? When you, I've never asked this question before, but what should you do with your hands uh, when you are in the speaking interview? It's kind of a fun question. Uh, to throw out at you. So what do you think? What's what's a good idea? So what should you do with your hands and arms? And arms during the interview. What do you think? Beck Jun says put it on the table and S says put it under the table. Um, okay, so a little bit of disagreement there. Uh, I suggest um, putting your hands on the table, okay, in front of you. 
Uh, don't lock your hands. So don't do this. Don't lock your hands. Keep them apart. Don't put them under the table and don't cross your arms, okay? Uh, sometimes when we feel really nervous, we'll instinctively cross our arms and close our sphere of communication. Uh, that's a bad idea. When you put your arms on your chest, it literally pushes on your lungs, so even your breathing is restricted. So definitely don't cross your arms. Don't put them under the table. My recommendation is put them on the table. Uh, keep your body posture open and forward, okay? So you're enunciating outward. And um, use hand gestures. So if you say big, small, uh, use your hands to gesture uh, what you're saying as uh, you see me do in this class. Uh, that will help your communication, okay? Our brain, our speech, and our body language, they're closely connected. So uh, you'll notice that good presenters, teachers, they incorporate body language into their communication. So body language is good, okay? Eye contact is good. You don't have to stare at the examiner. <laughs> that might make them feel a little bit awkward, but do make eye contact, okay? So keep your hands on the table use body language and keep an open body posture open confident body posture okay so that's good strategy all right yeah, absolutely, Haman. So resting your hands on the table makes it easier to use your hands for body posture. Okay, so um, you're in the exam, you're feeling comfortable, you're sitting straight. Make sure to wear comfortable clothes. You don't need to wear a tie that's choking you, okay? Uh, just a shirt, dress shirt, not a t-shirt if possible. And then the examiner will greet you. So the examiner will say, welcome to the speaking portion of the IELTS exam. My name is Adrian. I will be your examiner for this part of the test. Uh, there are three parts to the speaking. I will give you instructions for each, and I will record it for marking purposes. Um, to begin, a few questions to get to know you better, and some questions on a general topic. And then they'll open up with uh, one of these two questions. So let's start with this one. Uh, what is your full name? So give me a nice uh, full sentence for this one. So what is your full name? Okay. What is your full name? And again, practice saying this in many different ways so you can be natural, confident, and fluent right away. Okay. Uh, Kyber Jan says, my full name is Kyber Momond, as you will see in my passport. Please just call me Kyber. Kyber, very nice. Okay, fluent. Uh, Tito Bati says, my complete name is uh, Tezaz Sharfraz, but you can call me by my nickname, Tito. Okay. Uh, my apologies, students, if I don't pronounce your names accurately. Of course, it's challenging, names from around the world. Uh, Murasa Baraki says, my full name is Murasa Baraki. Uh, simply call me by my nickname, which is Honey. Okay. Because you're sweet like Honey, Murasa, right? Um, okay. Jaskaran says, my full name is Jaskaran Singh. Please just call me by my first name, Jaskaran. That works. And I really like how many of you are remembering that you should tell the examiner what to call you because they're instructed to ask, what should I call you? So if you don't say that, then that's their next question. So it's good to show that you prepared uh, for the exam. So um, my given name is Alexander and my surname is Jones. Please just call me Alex for short. Okay, so here's another way to say it. Repeat after me. What is your full name? My given name is Alexander and my surname is Jones. Uh, please just call me Alex for short. Okay, 
Uh, British Canadians, we like to say surname. Americans will say family name. Uh, either one, it's okay. All right. And then comes uh, the next question. Again, these two questions are always side by side. May I see your identification, please? Okay, so the examiner will ask for the identification that you used to register for the exam. They have a piece of paper. Their instructions are to match your registration ID with you and the information that they have on the paper. So make sure to have it with you. If you don't have it with you, that would be the end of your uh, test right there. Um, so hopefully you have it with you, of course, and then you need to respond clearly and completely to this question as well. Again, remember students, this is not a chit chat, so you want to give as complete answers as possible. Tito Bhatti says, yeah, sure, here it is. Um, the one I used for registration purposes, please take a look. Okay, good, Tito. Uh, let's see, Mohammed Wahab says, certainly here is my ID I used for registration. Uh, Mohammed Wahab here, H-E-R-E, -E. okay. Uh, Roshni, yes, uh, here it is. Please have a look, sir or madam. Okay, yeah, be polite, but don't kowtow too much, okay? Um, which means don't be overly uh, polite. That can be awkward as well, okay? Uh, Bumi Chatbar, our other member, says, sure, here's my passport. Please have a look. Yeah, you don't have to overcomplicate. It's fine. So you can say absolutely. Or yes, of course. Absolutely is maybe a little too colloquial. Yes, of course. Here is my, eh, let's say, driver's license this time, um, which I used to register uh, for this exam. Okay. And then uh, don't get freaked out. A lot of the examiners, they'll stare at your ID. They'll stare at you. They'll stare at the ID. They'll look for actually things like your eye color or the positioning of your nose and so on. Because in the past, people have hired doppelgangers to sit the exam instead of them, meaning people who look like them. So they do stare at your ID and then they stare at you to make sure that you're not just a look alike a phony or a fake okay uh, the specific word for that in english is a doppelganger doppelganger is a person that looks like you again students when you're hearing these words especially if they're new make sure to speak and repeat okay all right and then comes a very common icebreaker question icebreaker means a question to make you feel comfortable uh, do you work or study? Do you work or study? Okay. So Beck John's jumping the gun a little bit. Beck John says, I am not only studying at the Eurasian National University, but also I am preparing for this IELTS to pursue my graduate education in Canada next year. A very nice, nice use of the correlative conjunction, not only, but also to emphasize. Okay, Titzer, Sarah says, I'm currently working as a teacher in a private school uh, near our house. Uh, Titzer, what do you teach? Do you teach all subjects or do you focus on a specific subject like math or history? Uh, give me a little bit of detail, okay? Students, detail, 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 okay? Uh, the key concept for high band scores always, really important tip here, okay, is... Um, give details details show fluency complexity and range of vocabulary so details are important okay so give details as much as possible okay show your ability to its fullest. All right. Think answer, explain, example. 
All right. Awaz Akhmedov says, I not only work at McDonald's as a cashier, but I've also been studying uh, English to start my education in Canada. It's good. And Awaz, um, it's good to contract, okay? Uh, we don't actually say McDonald's restaurant because McDonald's is so well known. So native or natural English, we'll just say McDonald's. I'm going to McDonald's for a burger or I work at McDonald's. Uh, and uh, the I have been studying is definitely contracted. So a native speaker would say, I've been studying. I've been studying English to start my education in Canada. Charlie says, currently... I work as an adjunct uh, faculty in a private engineering college at Kolkata, but at the same time, I'm also studying for IELTS so that I can pursue my dream, which is to settle down in Canada. Nice, Charlie. Okay, good. All right. I like your use of uh, idiomatic language. Okay. Pursue my dream to settle down. All right. It's good idiomatic language. Uh, you don't have to use complicated idioms in the IELTS exam students, you just have to use idiomatic language, which can be much simpler, okay? All right, um, Flower Sun says, well, I'm a student and I'm learning for IELTS, okay? Join your ideas, Flower Sun, and I like learning for IELTS is not unique from being a student. Or if you're trying to tell me that you're a student in college or university and you're studying for the IELTS, then you need to express that in a clearer way. Okay. Uh, Roshni Kunte says, I've been working in an, uh, for an IT company as a recruiter. Uh, as well, I'm preparing for the IELTS to pursue my higher education at a, un at a university abroad. Okay. Foreign university. Yeah, it's okay, Roshni in university in another country, okay? Juan Pablo Avila says, I'm between jobs right now, but I've been studying for several months for this exam. Really nice. So there's a good example of a response that's fairly short, but at the same time, it's high level, okay? Juan Pablo, I'm going to take your answer um, for this one right now, just so students can see that you can answer high level in a shorter way but it is more challenging, okay? So I'm between jobs at the moment. And here, many uh, native speakers, Juan Pablo, or good communicators would actually throw in what they do, okay? Um, so uh, I'm between jobs at the moment um, by trade. I am a software engineer. Nevertheless, I've been studying for this IELTS exam over the past six months as I plan to immigrate to Australia. Okay, so I added a little bit to it, okay, Juan Pablo, a little bit more detail, uh, but again, it's not a very long answer, nevertheless, very high level, okay, I'm between jobs is definitely an idiomatic expression, meaning I had a job before, so job before, uh, no job right now, but I'm looking for work in the future, or looking for work so that I can get a job uh, in the future, okay? So this is a really nice expression which includes all of this information. So when you tell a, an English speaker that you're between jobs, they understand all of this. You had one before, not now, and you're looking for work. So I'm between jobs at the moment. By trade, I'm a software engineer. Nevertheless, I've been studying for this IELTS exam over the past six months as I plan to immigrate to Australia. So lots of connection, nice range of grammar, uh, using uh, present perfect progressive, okay, and giving a lot of clarity to the examiner. That's how you score those high band scores. So well done with that. Good job, okay. Uh, Juan Pablo, you've really improved 
over these past months um, in your natural English language use. So good to see that. Okay. All right. Um, now, the next question. What do you like about your work or school? Give me a nice full sentence answer for this one. So what do you like about your work or school? Okay, give me something nice. All right. While I'm waiting for some of those, a little bit more of from our members, Vatsal says, I just, I, I've just completed my higher education at uh, Green's College, and I am studying uh, Master's in Science at university. Uh, Vatsal, always take the effort to specify which school, okay? You don't have to tell us the real school if you want to keep that confidential, but just make up a school like I did, okay? Mahesh Kamalia says, I just completed my Bachelor's of Pharmacy last July in India, and now I'm preparing uh, for this IELTS exam so that I can continue my master's in Canada. Good. All right. But uh, just one time is enough. I'll usually catch it. Okay. Uh, Ferdovs Nabiev is answering this question. What do you like about your work or school? Uh, Ferdovs says, um, at my job, I love problem solving. I mean, I like to use my cognitive skills um, which I implore as much as I can in my adult years. In addition, I like my coworkers uh, who are kind and awesome. Okay. All right. Uh, for Dobbs, careful not to overcomplicate or unnaturally complicate language as well. Okay. So using complex grammar students doesn't mean awkwardly overcomplicating what you say. So careful with word choice and over speaking. Charlie Sen says, well, I like the environment in the teacher's room in my college. Everybody is friendly and cooperative with each other. Like yesterday I was absent and it was the last date for submitting uh, questions. Mm, I'm not sure where you're going with that, Charlie Sen, that example. Don't get too complicated with the example, okay? All right, Violet Newen says, um, the part that I love most about learning is that I can speak to more and more people in different countries and I feel more intelligent. So Violet Newen, a couple corrections there, and this is to all students, don't use the word thing, okay? One way to speed up your improvement in any language, of course in English as well, is to avoid ambiguous nouns, okay? So this is a, an important tip. Learn languages faster by working hard to avoid ambiguous. Ambiguous means they're unclear, okay? We don't really know what you're talking about. So learn language faster by working hard to, uh, to avoid ambiguous, unclear words, uh, such as thing, stuff, sometime, something, okay, uh, people even, okay. Always find, and this is the key here, is always find more accurate words. Uh, another one, if we're looking at verbs, is do. Okay, we use do to substitute more accurate verbs. So always find more accurate words, okay, like um, aspects, components, criteria, uh, at 5 p.m., Um, professionals, trainers, okay? So always think about that more specific word, okay? Convolute, uh, expedite. So I'm just giving you some made up um, uh, 
verbs for uh, replacing the word do, okay? For instance. So always think about those more specific words. And um, if you find yourself saying the word thing or writing down the word thing, recognize it, respect it. So say, oh, okay, I just used the word thing. I have to stop, take it out, put some other word uh, that makes more sense, is more specific, and will get me more lexical resource uh, points on the exam. And of course, give more clarity for your uh, listener. If you're wondering about my speech and how I speak like this in real time, that's one of the tricks I've worked hard to master over my years and years of teaching is really paying attention to avoiding the word thing and stuff in my speech and writing. Okay. So pay attention to that in your answers. All right. Um, so what do you like about your work? or school, well, I can't say much about my job as I don't have one at the moment, but I do love to study because it empowers me to better understand the world around me and also to achieve my dreams like moving to the land down under and exploring the amazing culture and nature there. All right. So uh, this is in regard to my previous answer. Remember my previous answer? I'm between jobs at the moment by trade. I am a software engineer. Nevertheless, I've been studying for this IELTS exam over the past six months as I plan to immigrate to Australia. Again, students remember, speak and repeat. So the next question, what do you like about your work or school? I'm connecting. Well, I can't say much about my job as I don't have one at the moment, so I'm reflecting what I said here. But I do love to study because it empowers me to better understand the world around me and also to achieve my dreams like moving to the land down under. I'm paraphrasing Australia. One other way that we call Australia is the land down under. Of course, that comes from its location on the world map. So when you look at a world map, Australia is kind of stuck uh, down under all of the other uh, continents, okay? So um, the land down under and exploring the amazing culture and nature there, okay? All right, uh, so hopefully by this uh, point, you're really calm and confident in your um, skills and you're feeling fluent, okay? And the examiner will introduce the general topic of that interview uh, session. Okay, so here we go. Uh, let's talk about friends. So the examiner will say, let's talk about friends. Okay, and then comes the first question. How often do you meet your friends? So give me... A uh, nice full sentence answer uh, for this one. Okay, so how often do you meet your friends? And lots of answers coming here. All right, let's start with NS. NS uh, Taslikali says, I frequently uh, get together with my buddies. Uh, each day of the week, either at home or outside. Like today, I met with Austin in order to uh, get some motivation uh, for this exam. And that's not bad. Uh, come together with my buddies is okay. I frequently come together. Get together. In my neck of the woods anyway, it's more natural. Okay. I get together with my buddies quite often. Nice paraphrasing, Ines, and nice push for paraphrasing. Okay, it's good. I like it. All right. 
Uh, Awaz says, as I am employed, I don't have enough time to hang out with my friends. However, I sometimes meet them throughout my workday when they um, meet up with me to grab lunch. Grab lunch, Awaz. Grab some fast food. Okay. Uh, Tito says, I usually meet my friends every day after getting back from work. Like yesterday, uh, we met at a restaurant and had a delicious dinner. Nice. Okay. I like your smooth flowing examples. Students, it's great. Ellen Amori says, as I am preparing for this exam, I can't manage uh, sparing time for hanging out. I would say I meet my friends maybe two times a month. Wow, Elena, that's so sad. Friends are good to meet with. Why don't you uh, meet with your friends, Elena, and make them speak English with you? Just say, hey, I can meet with you, but I have to multitask. Let's hang out. Let's practice English at the same time. That's a good way to do it. Uh, Hemant uh, Sharma says, I'm normally busy on work days, so I meet my friends on weekends uh, over a couple of drinks at a sports bar, um, which is usually our favorite hangout joint. Okay, Hemant, uh, mention the name of the sports bar if you can. It would make a little bit more sense, okay? All right, let's see a couple more. Maximka Yarash says, I often meet my friends uh, at weekends because I don't have free time uh, during the work week. Uh, like last weekend on Saturday, I went to a pool hall and shot a couple games of billiards, okay? Or sat at a coffee shop. So that smooth flowing example is a good idea. All right. Uh, Mohammed Nasser says, I usually meet up with my friends almost every day. Um, through prayer, just like yesterday, I met with them and we went to um, a stadium to watch a football match. Okay. Mr. Beck says, as I have no job these days, I meet with my uh, best friend on a daily basis. Uh, we stroll around the streets, have some coffee. Uh, three hours ago, I was with my friend Ahmed and we ate out and played some computer games. Nice. Okay. So again, really good students. I think many of you have been uh, paying attention to the lessons on this channel and maybe on your uh, web accounts and you're really putting together some nice uh, responses that are sounding natural and accurate and detailed. Okay. That's great. So when you have this kind of a question, how often do you meet your friends? This how often question is a very popular part one question uh, often is looking for an adverb of frequency, right? Like always, often, usually, sometimes, rarely, never. Okay. So that's your adverbs of frequency. You should use one or two of those that make sense in the context. Now, the other point for talking about frequency. Okay. So how often is of course, remember your quantitative language. So twice a day, uh, three, four times a month, uh, once a year. So think about quantitative language. Um, I'm uh, a very social person by nature. So I frequently hang out with my friends in the evenings and on weekends. I would say at least four to five times a week on average. Just yesterday, I visited my friend John and we chatted for a couple hours over a glass of wine. So I've taken a few of the elements uh, from your responses and incorporated them into this band nine response. Okay. So I'm a very social person by nature. Let's get rid of that S. I'm a very social person by nature. It means that I socialize. 
I'm a very social person by nature, so I frequently hang out with my friends in the evenings and on weekends. That's my specific language. Uh, hang out is the uh, idiomatic language. Okay? Again, you don't need to use these complicated idioms like the apple of my eye, uh, for instance, or don't throw bricks when you live in a glass house. Uh, you don't have to use these complicated metaphors or idioms to get band nine. When um, the IELTS uh, books and teachers say idiomatic language, they're really just referring to these simpler, uh, natural, idiomatic expressions. Okay? I would say at least four to five times a week on average. This is my quantitative language, my numbers, okay, four to five times. Just yesterday, I visited my friend John, and we chatted for a couple hours over a glass of wine. Uh, that is my example to back up my answer, okay? So that's how you do it, okay? All right, uh, next question. Let's keep rolling. You guys are doing a great job. Hats off to you. What do you usually do with your friends? Give me a nice full sentence answer for this question. What do you usually do with your friends? Okay. See a little chatter going on about IDP and British Council? Doesn't matter. They're very closely connected. It's the same. Okay, tons and tons of answers coming up. I can tell many of you were thinking. Uh, students, try not to get ahead of the curve, okay? So uh, focus on what we're doing at the moment. I know you're anxious to get your answers out, but don't get ahead of the curve. It means focus on where we are in the lesson currently. Don't try to be uh, preempting these following questions. It's not as effective in the long run, okay? You'll have a chance to answer anyway. All right, Puza Gurung says, I usually meet and play football with my friends in a park near my home. Just last Saturday, we played together and enjoyed the game a lot. Dana Naji Kathuria says, whenever we get to meet each other, we usually have food to eat. Remember what I said, students, about not using something? We usually have warm food to eat, uh, like... Um, uh, chicken curry just yesterday. Moreover, we often visit each other's house whenever possible, okay? Or maybe a yummy beef vindaloo or something like that, okay? So be specific, Dunanaiji, okay? Be specific. Don't use the word something. As soon as you catch yourself writing thing, something, stuff, go back, replace it, all right? Okay, Awaz says, when I meet my friends, we frequently play ball games like football or basketball. Like last Sunday, we played a very dramatic game of football and our team won. Okay, Awaz, good. All right. So let's see a couple more here. Diva. Uh, Mental says, usually we go to the cinema or at times on a short tour. Uh, apart from that, we play games with each other most of the time. Okay, Diva, you need more detail, okay? Uh, usually we go to the cinema because there is a really nice new theater located about a five-minute walk from my place. Um, three or four times a month, uh, we'll go for a hike. Uh, at the uh, forest that's uh, near the city. And apart from that, we play computer games like Call of Duty with each other. Okay, so again, be specific, students. The more specific you are, the higher your band score because the more complex your language will be, all right? Okay, Fad says, we meet... For we meet at a coffee shop and we drink a cup of cappuccino. After that, we go to the cinema, uh, watch an interesting film, uh, then perhaps our favorite restaurant for some tasty food as usual. Fud, I like that, okay? So you're going into detail. Coffee shop, we drink a cappuccino, talk about what we did during the week. Then we watch a movie at the cinema, like the new 
uh, Spider-Man film just the other day, and then uh, we go to our favorite restaurant called. Okay, so good. That's the detail that we're looking for. Elena Mori says, we generally meet at the uh, nearest Burger King restaurant. Um, we grab a Whopper and chat with uh, each other for a long time. Okay, I like it. That's specific. That will get you marks, all right? So, <clears throat> uh, most of the time when I'm together with my pals, we either do some athletic activity like uh, shooting hoops last Sunday or some other entertaining adventure such as paintball wars. All right. So um, here we go. Repeat after me. What do you usually do with your friends? Most of the time. Most of the time is paraphrasing usually. When I'm together with my pals. Pals paraphrasing friends. When I'm together setting up my real condition. We either do some athletic activity like shooting hoops. Hoops, idiomatic expression for basketball. Last Sunday, very specific or some other entertaining adventure, such as paintball wars, okay? Notice the use of either or. I'm combining subordinating conjunction of time with correlative conjunction of either or. These are the elements that the examiner is looking for uh, to give you those high band scores. Now, if that was a little bit confusing, if you're like, whoa, did Adrian just throw a whole bunch of grammar words at me what do i do um don't worry i'll write it here so tip uh, practice combining subordinating conjunctions with correlative uh, conjunctions for effective and expressive communication Okay, so uh, subordinating conjunctions are cause and effect, uh, cause plus effect, uh, time, condition, and opposition. Okay, if you aren't familiar with this term, subordinating conjunctions, uh, just Google it. Okay, I'm sure you'll find a lot of information if you type in the words subordinating conjunction into Google. Uh, correlative conjunctions are your paired conjunctions, okay, paired conjunctions, uh, like uh, either or, that's the one I just used, uh, neither nor, uh, whether or, both, and, uh, and there's a few more, I'm not going to write them all right now, uh, combining these with these creates very strong, clear communication, okay? So work on that, all right? Okay, uh, students, next question. Where did you meet your best friend? Give me a nice full sentence answer for this one. Uh, where did you meet your best friend, okay? And if you don't know right off the top of your head, you can say, whew, off the top of my head, I can't remember. Uh, just give me a sec. Okay, so you can ask for a bit of time. It's okay to do that, all right? Sadia is asking me, how can I answer questions in part one, two, or three where I don't understand them? Okay, uh, you can't, Sadia, so you can't answer a question that you don't understand if that's what you're asking me. You just have to say, I don't understand what you're asking me. Let's move to the next question. Okay, uh, if you don't actually know the answer to the question uh, because it's a strange question, uh, then just make up some imaginary answer. You should be okay, all right? 
Okay, so let's see what you have for this question. Violet Newwin says, my best friend and I usually meet every day at school, but we uh, haven't done it much now because of this new virus outbreak. We're staying at home. Um, that's not where do you usually meet your best friend, Violet Newwin. Careful. Uh, it's where did you meet your best friend? So it means the first time that you met your best friend. Where was it? Okay. Charlie Sen says, well, I met with my best friend, um, Sadeep, uh, in my college. She's a very shy in nature with a fair complexion. I remember we talked to each other for the first time uh, in our college canteen where he was looking for a place to stay. Good answer, Charlie. Nice. Okay. Uh, Vatsal says, my best friends live in uh, my community, so we meet daily at night and share our daily activities. Again, students, this is asking you the actual one occasion where you met your best friend. Okay. It's not where do you, it's where did you. Okay. Uh, Boomi Shutbar says, well, I first met my best friend, Pooja, uh, 10 years ago during my graduation. In fact, uh, we were roommates for a course i would say those were some memorable days a uh, boomy good you understood the question well careful with your grammar and word choice okay um i do like how some students are realizing that hey i should mention my best friend's name okay so oh yes i remember or i recall i met my best friend or you can say BFF, best friend for life, um, Corey, in, uh, at a basketball uh, practice in grade 11. We chatted a bit and hit it off. Uh, we've been friends. ever since okay so uh repeat after me students uh where did you meet your best friend off the top of my head i can't remember just give me a sec well yeah i recall i met my bff Corey, at a bas at basketball practice in grade 11. Uh, we chatted a bit and hit it off we've been friends ever since okay all right so again, notice the use of natural language. Uh, contractions in speaking is a good idea, like weave, okay? So make sure to practice that. Uh, students, a uh, few more questions. How do you keep in touch with your friends? Have the games you play with your friends changed in the last 10 years? And if you could give a gift to one of your friends, what would you give and who would you give it to? So these are getting a little bit more and more difficult and i'll leave these questions for you to practice uh, at home for homework and you can send me your recording to my email uh, adrian at aehelp.com and i will estimate your ielts speaking score okay so um, you can see those questions again a little bit later in the video it will be on the channel uh, to all of our viewers, make sure to check us out at aehelp.com for academic IELTS and gielts.help.com for general. Uh, we have lots and lots of HD videos uh, with uh, the right strategies uh, for getting those high band marks uh, taught by me and some other teachers. As well, we have practice exams and a fully interactive course for your phone, tablet, PC. Again, those websites, the general one looks like this, G-I-E-L-T-S help.com. Click that big red button to join. And for the academic, look for the blue background, aehelp.com. Click that big red button to join. Really a fantastic job. I'm so happy to see many of you uh, communicating much more effectively with details, with clarity. That's fantastic. Uh, you're very welcome, Roshni. 
Boomi, you're very, very welcome. Awaz, you're welcome. Uh, thank you, members, for your support and much love back at you, Jun Toon Nayem, and everybody else watching from the heart of Budapest. Have a great rest of your day, and hopefully, I'll catch you tomorrow. Bye for now.